Welcome to the Crosserville Grid Builder tutorial. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the app and walk through all the steps involved in constructing a crossword puzzle. So let's get started. Um, after you've created your Crosserville account, you can bring up the Grid Builder tool by clicking on this icon. The first thing that you're going to want to do is create a new puzzle, file, new puzzle. If you have an existing theme set, you can choose one of our from one of our templates um, so choose an option here in this tutorial I'm just going to go with an empty grid and you can set the size and specify the symmetry I'm just going to go with the defaults so the first step is to design your grid by which I mean lay out your black squares and optionally your circled square squares and shaded squares so there's hotkeys for all of those operations um, and if you can't remember what they are, you can go to the grid menu um, and you can see that to toggle block, you would use dot, toggle circle, shift eight, and toggle shaded square, shift two. Uh, so let's just start adding a couple blocks, dot, 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 because we have rotational symmetry, corresponding blocks are added down here. Uh, you can add multiple blocks at one time. To do so, you have to first select multiple blocks, which is done by holding down the control key and just selecting some blocks. So I can hit dot and toggle blocks on all of those. Once you have blocks in your grid, you can move them around by just click and drag. Um, and as you do enter your blocks and move them around, your puzzle stats get updated total word count, black squares, etc. And like I mentioned, you can also have circled squares with a shift eight and shaded squares with a shift two. Okay, so for the rest of this tutorial, I'm gonna work through a specific example uh, using a, a themed Monday level puzzle. Uh, the example that I chose is a New York Times puzzle that was written by Lynn Lempel, who's one of my favorite constructors. Um, this was a puzzle published back in 2018. <clears throat> I have previously entered her theme entries into a blank grid and saved it, and I'm going to bring that up now. Crosserville demo. Okay, so here's her theme. It's got a central revealer, go first, and the other theme entries have a synonym for the word go at the beginning uh, that's highlighted in circled squares. So great. Monday level theme. Um, now the first thing you notice is that some of the slots are highlighted in red and some of them are highlighted in yellow. Uh, so a red slot, for example, six down, is a slot that has no candidates. So there's no words in your word list that are 15 letters long, third letter E, fifth letter A, etc. Uh, so these are your unfillable slots, and a yellow slot is one with a constrained uh, set of possibilities, so 10 or fewer. So we've got unfillable slots and constrained slots. And the goal of, in designing your grid is to eliminate unfillable slots and minimize the number of constrained slots. And if you do have constrained slots, you want them to be you know, separated as much as possible. So let's go through the process of designing a grid for this theme set, which turns out to be pretty straightforward. Um, so first I'm going to need to add a little finger here to get rid of that two letter slot. Similarly over here, I'm going to need to have a finger to break up the east and the west and maybe something up here. Okay. So, the next thing that I would do is look at how to break up these long down entries that are currently unfillable. And I would start with the central column because there's an additional constraint there. So I can put a block here or I can put a block here. But those are my only two choices because I, I can't do a, a block here because then I would have an unchecked square. Um, so how would you choose between those two configurations? Uh, the basic rule of thumb for both designing your grid and uh, choosing options for fill is you always want to make your choices such that you have the most number of options going forward. You want to minimize your constraints. 
So in this case, I want to look at what my current options are for uh, seven down in with the block in this configuration. And I can do that by right clicking. And I see that uh, there's nine candidates. Um, and it'll list the top 10 in this case, because there's only nine, it'll list all of them. And I can see that I have uh, you know five pretty good entries for seven down in this configuration. And if I move the block up here, I have a constrained slot and I can look at those candidates. And again, I have nine, but in my opinion, these are a little worse, um, which is not too surprising because it's going through three theme entries. So this choice makes a bit more sense. And once you start making choices, then you know the consequences add up. So for example, in the slot that is currently five down, I can't really put a block here because that would give me a two letter square. So I need to put something here. Um, and then I have a unfillable slot below that. So I'd have to break that up as well. And now with a block here, well, I can't put a block in this column. I can't put one here because that would give me a unchecked square. So I'd have to put something here. Um, and then for these guys, let's add blocks here. And then we're just left with two more unfillable slots. Let's just break them in half. Um, and now we've got what appears to be a fillable grid, no unfillable slots. <clears throat> There's two constrained slots and they're not too close to each other. So we should be okay. Um, the number of words are 78, which is fine for a Monday. Black squares, 36, which is excellent for a Monday. Um, it will show you your word counts for slots of different length. So let's take a look at our three letter slots. There's 13 of them, which is also very good. If you wanna see where they are in the grid, you can click on the number 13 and those slots will get highlighted in purple. Um, and you can similarly for the rest of your slots. Okay, so we've got a pretty good grid. Let's move on to the next step, which is fill. So we'll click on the fill tab. So the first thing that we recommend that you do uh, when you're trying to fill your puzzle is to just do a full grid autofill. Um, and it's you're normally not going to use the solutions that pop out at this stage, but it's a good idea to do it uh, just to confirm that your grid is in fact fillable. So to do that, we click on find fill. And this is a pretty easy puzzle to fill. Found a solution right away. Uh, if you're gonna if you have a wide, a more wide open grid, this can take significantly longer. Um, you can get additional information about the fill that's being shown by changing the active slot. So if I, like for example, click on 22 across, I can see that there's China is the current fill. It's got a score of 50. It has a, here gives you a sample clue, uh, wedding registry category. Um, and you can do that for other slots. You can also look at your fill in list form. To do that, click on the words tab. And this shows all the words that are currently in the puzzle. So fill plus the words that were entered in manually. If you just want to look at fill, you can click this checkbox. And sometimes it's a little easier to evaluate fill in this form. You know, for example, I can right away see the real low scoring entries. The other thing you can do from the words pane is search for dupes. So if I scroll to the bottom and click on find possible dupes, the app will look for substrings that are three characters or longer that appear in multiple uh, slots. Now, not all of these are gonna be dupes. Uh, most of them actually are not, but some are. Like, for example, Esta and Estus is clearly a dupe. Um, and you're gonna clearly, definitely wanna be coming back to this frequently because it's very easy for dupes to creep into your puzzle. Okay, back to the fill pane. Um, so I clicked on find next and it gave me the first solution. I can iterate through solutions by just clicking on again find next and it found solution two. The letters that changed between the two solutions are highlighted with a green background and I can just keep iterating through solutions. I can go back and forward and I can stop the process. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is global filters. But before I do that, I want to take a quick side trip and talk about the default word list.
So the first time that you bring up the app, uh, it will download the default word list from the site and it will store it uh, locally in browser storage. Uh, if you want information about which version of the default word list you have, you can go to word list, default word list info. So you can see how many entries, you can see when it was downloaded. You can also click get latest. So the default word list is updated frequently. Uh, so feel free to come back and you know get the latest version if you want. If you want additional information about the default word list, you can click on the help button, which just takes you to the, the fact page, uh, what's up with the default word list. So you can read this later if you want, but I just want to call out that you know the word list mostly consists of words uh, from puzzles that have appeared online. <clears throat> the word list is scored. Um, the short entries, the three, four, and five letter words have all been manually scored. And the criteria used for that is given here. And the only thing I want to say about that is I want to call out the two bottom categories. So words that have a score of five, these are real bad words. You want to kind of avoid them at almost all costs. And words that have a score of 10, that's what most people would consider crossword ease. And it's very hard to create a grid without some crossword ease. You need those gluey entries to hold your grid together. So a good rule of thumb is try to eliminate words with a score of five and minimize your words with a score of 10. And, um, you know, the higher the better, obviously. So for the longer letter words, six letters or longer, um, some of them have been manually scored, but most of them have a score that's proportional to the number of times that they've appeared in puzzles online. So it's not a perfect metric, but it's better than nothing. So let's go back to the fill pane. And with that in mind, let's see if we can filter out those words with a score of five. So to do that, we will add a global filter and I'll set a minimum score of 10. And you can set your global filter for words of a particular length, which is sometimes useful, or you can say any length. So let's just do it for any length. And we'll see if the grid is still fillable. And yes, it is. So if I go back to the words pane, I can see that all of those words with a score of five are gone and the worst entries have 10. Still not great fill, but better than it was before. Um, another thing that, another good thing to do when you're searching for fill is to um, try to break up your puzzle into independent regions. So right now, this puzzle is all interconnected with uh, empty squares. But from looking at it, I can see that if I had a character right here, the first letter of 33 across, well then this region in the southeast would be independent of the rest of the, of the puzzle. And similarly, if I had a letter right here, the last letter of 42 across or the first letter of 43 down, then I would have three independent regions. I would have a northwest corner a central swath and a southeast corner. They could all be filled independently. So if I was doing this puzzle, the first thing I would do is try to come up with options for these two squares. And again, the rule of thumb in making choices is always go with the ones that give you the most possibilities going forward. So what would be a good first letter for 43 down to give me the most options here for 43 down? To answer that question, we can go to the lookup tab. So in the lookup tab, you can perform ad hoc regular expression queries. Uh, for those of you who don't know, regular expression is a language that allows you to express patterns, to describe patterns rather, and you can do regular expression searches to find a set of words that match a particular pattern. And they can get very sophisticated. It's definitely a good thing to learn, especially for mining your word list for potential theme answers. Uh, but in this case, because we had slot 43 down highlighted, um, it gave a, a default regular expression that matches uh, 43 down. So dot dot two wildcard characters followed by V followed by four wildcard characters. So here's all of the words in your word list that could fit in 43 down. Um, by default, the words are sorted by score. But if you want to sort alphabetically, you can just click on uh, the entry heading. You can go back and forth if you want. 
And if they're sorted alphabetically, then you can easily pick out a good first letter uh, for this entry. So I can see there's not too many A's, even fewer B's, a, a few more C's. Now I've looked at this list before and I happen to know that R is, R would be a good choice. There's quite a few R entries and there's quite a few good R entries. And R additionally would be a good final letter for a four letter word. So R is a good choice here. And similarly, let's put a, a T here. Okay, so now we have three independent regions that can be filled independently. So if I go back to the fill tab and I highlight a slot in the southeast region. If I now hit find fill, it'll just fill this region. And I can do the same in the central region and the northwest. If I want to uh, fill the complete puzzle or find fill for the complete grid, I can just click on a black square and say find fill and it'll search for fill in the entire grid. Okay, so we've broken our puzzle up into independent regions. That's a good start. Now the next tools in our arsenal are slot option searches and slot filters. So let's take a look at those. So let me go to uh, say three down. And when I do that, I get two new buttons down here, find slot options and add slot filter. Um, so it shows that there's 135 candidates right now for three down. And that's just words that could fit into this slot, you know, nine letters, third letter A, fifth letter S that have a minimum score of 10. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean all 135 of those are valid. To find the valid options, I click on find slot options. And I find that 110 of those are valid. So a va valid meaning if I put this, these words into three down, there is going to be fill that I could find around it. Um, so there's a couple things that you can do from the slot option table. First off, if you just mouse over a word, it will show you the sample clue as a tooltip. Uh, if you want additional information about the word, you can single click the word and it'll take you to the lookup pane and look up the word and show the results against our clue database. So you can see when it last appeared in a puzzle, you can see some sample clues, and you can see how that word has been used in puzzles across the day of the week. Um, so we'll go back to the fill tab. So that was a single click. If I want to accept this word into the puzzle, I can just double click. Uh, so that added bean salad to three down. Um, any operation that you do in the grid can be undone. If you go to the grid menu, you can uh, click on undo edit or use the keyboard shortcut control Z and you can redo with control shift Z. So if I hit control Z, it will undo that and control shift Z will redo it. Okay, the other thing that you can do in the slot option table is you can edit the scores. The scores are shown in parentheses. Now, scoring fill scoring your word list it's a it's a matter of personal taste what some people think is good fill other people don't and there's a lot of disagreement on that so you're gonna most definitely want to score your own word list to your to your taste so you can change the score right from the slot option table so if I click on a score I can just change it and it'll get persisted to uh, browser storage um, so I can say up oh, bean salad I don't really like that I'm gonna make that a 30 and class ring, that's a good entry. I'm gonna make that a 60. You can uh, go down the list if you want. And the last thing that you can do from the slot option table is you can exclude words. So you can either exclude them from your dictionary, which means it's never going to appear and fill in any puzzle that you create with this app, or you can just exclude it from this particular grid. So I can, for example, exclude bean salad from my dictionary and I can maybe exclude class ring and dear Santa from just this grid. So words that you exclude from a grid, that's a global filter. And I can see what they are by clicking on this exclude words button. I can see class ring and dear Santa, which I just excluded and I can undo those, those choices. 
And for words that I added to the dictionary exclude list, I can see those by going to word list, manage excludes words, and here's bean salad, which I can also undo if I want. <clears throat> okay, so that's it for the slot option table. The other thing that you can do is create a slot filter. Uh, so slot filter obviously just uh, as opposed to a global filter just uh, will affect this particular slot three down. And there's three types of slot filters. You can have a minimum score. So I could say, you know, set a minimum score of 40. And then I'm just going to be left with options that have 40 or have a score of 40 or more. And I can undo that if I want. And I can also have slot filters in the form of word lists that can either be include word lists or exclude word lists. So to add that, I click on add slot filter. When I do that, I get this additional column, uh, add to filter with buttons that let me easily add words over to the filter. So I can decide whether, so let's make an include word list and let's just add the first couple entries into that word list. So now if I say find slot options, I'm just gonna have those five. Um, and I can temporarily disable a slot filter to see what the results would be if it was gone and I can re-enable it and I can delete it. Okay, so to demonstrate a few more features, let, let me actually get into filling this puzzle. I'm gonna look at this central swath. Um, so if, if I was filling this puzzle, I would first you know, look at the constraint slot. You wanna make sure that you have at least some viable options. So let's take a look at 31 down, find slot options. So there's nine options. Um, you know, the first five look pretty good to me, and then the ones that are 10 are not so good. And this is a region of the puzzle that's not going to be too hard to fill. The surrounding uh, slots are short, so I should be okay setting a slot filter to 30 here and just leave myself with five options. Um, but the next thing that I would do is I would turn my attention to the long entries. You always want to make sure that you're long entries or bonus entries are optimized. Um, editors absolutely use your bonus entries to judge your fill, so it's a good idea to focus on this. So let's take a look. In this region we have a seven letter um, entry for 10 down. Let's see what our options are here. Um, there are more than 300, so the app will always stop searching when it hits 300. So we have a, a wide open area here where with tons of possibilities. So what I would do in that case is start adding um, more constrained slot filters. Right, I can be a little more strict up here. And since the surrounding slots are all three, four, and five letter um, slots that have been, whose words have been uh, manually scored, I can feel pretty confident that if I increase the minimum score to 30, I'm gonna have good options in these surrounding slots. So let's go and do that. I'm going to add 30 for these down slots. And 30 for these across slots. Okay, so now if I go back to 10 down and I say find slot options, I'm down to 32, which is still plenty. Um, and if I look at my those options, there's quite a few that I'm fine with. Um, and I can pretty much choose any of these and know that the surrounding fill is going to be at least good, right? It's going to have a minimum score of 30 or more. Um, so I'm in good shape up here. Uh, the next thing that you can do is uh, compute grid scores. So to do that, you click on the Evaluate Options button, and it will compute a grid score. So a grid score is a number that gives you a sense of how good the surrounding fill would be with this each particular option. So uh, in particular, it's a number that's proportional to uh, the optimal fill in the neighboring slots. Um, so the neighboring slots would be the crossers of 10 down and the crossers of the crossers. So that would be this, this, this set of slots here. 
Um, now grid score is a number that you want to use as a guideline, but you shouldn't think of it, you shouldn't think of your goal as being to just optimize grid score. Because as I said earlier, you know, you, you certainly want to make trade-offs with, you would want to, you know, you wouldn't want to have a bad long entry at the expense of having good, uh, better fill for your shorter entries. So this is a, this is a good example because the, the option with the highest grid score is Gannett, uh, media giant that owns the Detroit Free Press. So that's not a particularly good entry. Um, and I wouldn't want to, even though I could have the best overall grid score, I still wouldn't want to use this one. So let's exclude that from the grid. Uh, but there's plenty other ones that are pretty good. So if I was, you know, doing this puzzle for, for real, I would investigate a bunch of these options, but let's just go with Serpent, which is good, and see what our options are uh, as a result of that. Uh, so what's 19 across? We've got, got three options here that are all fine. Um, so now a bunch of squares have, uh, have gray letters that showed up. So when the app is determined that there's just a single possibility in a square, it will show you that letter in gray. Um, it's not hasn't been accepted into the puzzle yet and if you want to do that there are a couple of keyboard shortcuts to help you out so let's say that I want to add Craig the letters in 11 down I can select 11 down as my active uh, slot and hit shift enter and that will accept Craig into the puzzle I can undo that and if I want to accept all of these words I can do alt shift enter and that will accept all of them and I got one little guy left here let's just look at our chances bodes modes uh, let's just go with nodes um, so that's the basic strategy that we suggest for using this app uh, to find fill you know first you want to break your grid into independent regions if that's possible and next you want to just look at the options for each slot in a region and set appropriate slot filters so if you have a really constrained region, you're going to need to be looser with your slot filters. And conversely, if you have an unconstrained region with lots of possibilities, like the little corner we just looked at, uh, you can be more strict. You can set higher score thresholds or you know, possibly set uh, slot filters as short include lists. And once you've gone through your region and set up all your slot filters, then you can start you know, just selecting options, knowing that you're going to have pretty good fill going forward. Um, so you can either do that as we just did up in this corner by doing slot by slot, or like let's say that we have set up slot filters in the rest of this region. I can just click on find fill and I can just start cycling through options and pick the one that I like. Okay, and don't forget, look for dupes, search for dupes. Okay, so that's fill and there's just three more things that I want to mention uh, before I end this tutorial. Um, so the first is restore points. So as you're creating your, your grid uh, and, and adding your fill, you can at any point create a restore point, uh, which is the state of your puzzle, the words in your grid, including uh, all of your filters, and you can revert back to that restore point. So that can be useful. Um, I have created a restore point with a the completed version of this puzzle so i'm going to revert to that file revert to restore point so i have completed puzzle um, this is actually the completed puzzle that lynn did so here's her fill and her clues um, you and and the last thing you want to do is export your puzzle so export your puzzle um, you go to File, Export Puzzle. There are four choices. Um, you can either do an Across Light Puzzle. So I choose Across Light Puzzle. It will download a puzzle file. The name of the puzzle is the title of your puzzle, .puzz. And if I click on that, here's my puzzle file. And I can also do, um, I can do, oops. Uh, across light text, PDF, or New York Times submission. So let's just do a quick New York Times submission. For that, you need to enter in an address. Uh, 
and that will create a PDF file which you can bring up and this is in the format that the New York Times wants. So you have your grid and you have your clues and words in column format. Um, okay, so the last topic that I want to discuss is word lists. So like I said, there's a default word list that you can start using, but a lot of you are going to want to use your own, import your own word list. Uh, so to do that, go to word list, manage word list. Um, right now we just have the default word list, uh, but you can import your own. Um, and the app is pretty flexible with regard to word list formats. You can have an unscored word list, which is just a text file, and each each line in the text file would be a word. Uh, the words can't have spaces, and they can't have special characters. They only have alphanumeric characters. Uh, if you do have special characters, they will get flagged during import. Um, you can also have scored word lists, which is probably the most common. And a scored word list is just a text file where each line has a word and a score and they can either be separated with semicolon, comma, or tab. You know, semicolon is sort of the industry standard, um, but you can have word lists separated by comma or tab, which makes them a little easier to manage in, you know, for example, Excel. Uh, and you can also have a word list that is scored with sample clues, and the sample clues will show up in the fill pane uh, during the fill process. So for that, you just have a text file where each line has three components, a word, a score, and a clue. And again, they can be separated with semicolon, comma, or tab. So let's just demonstrate that by importing. I've downloaded the Peter Broda list, uh, which is pretty popular. Let's click on that. It's a big list, it takes a second to load. Okay, so now we have Peter Broda's list. It's got almost a half a million entries. When you have multiple word lists, the app will merge them. So the merged word list has a total of 504,000 words. You can change the priority of the word list by just dragging them. Um, the higher priority word, so if you have a word that appears in multiple word lists, the app will use the score from the higher priority word list. And also during the fill process, it will start by choosing words from the higher priority word list. Um, you can temporarily inactivate a word list by just checking this. You can reactivate it and you can delete it. So that's it for the word list and that's it for the tutorial. Uh, I hope you take the app out for a test drive and try to construct some puzzles. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues or have any suggestions, please send us an email at support at crossroadville.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, and thank you for listening.